can still hear it in my dreams and my nightmares. It feels like it was only yesteryear. <sighs> How I wish to see her beauty again. Planet Nibiru, the ninth planet in the solar system. A vast, luxurious, and rich planet with its surface comprised of 50% land and 50% ocean. It may be a distant way from the sun, but the light still shines upon it. The sun's god rays blast through the clouds onto the enormous mountains. The animals wake up, signaling that it is morning. The eight-legged Guntha stretches his body. The winged family croaks and lifts off into the air. Its roar echoes into the sky. On the ground, the plant-eating two-legged Vetus becomes frightened and runs. The sun shines on the city of Valda, the third largest on the planet, signaling to the inhabitants that morning has arrived. The city begins to bustle with activity. The Morians gets ready for the day. Families feeding themselves with a breakfast, neighbors greeting neighbors, and children heading off to school for education. Inside of a two-story house in the Divig district, a mother walks onto the living room and walks up the stairs. She takes off her gloves and knocks on the bedroom door. Tell! Your father is waiting for you! It's time to go! Yes, ma'am! Yes, ma'am! Mia Dumuni walks away from the door. Inside, Sal Dumuni, a young adult, puts on the ancient Greek-like red robe. He slips his feet into a pair of knee-high boots and he puts on a captain's hat. He looks at the mirror and adjusts the suit underneath. <sighs> Alright, here we go. He exits the room and heads down the stairs. Coming down the stairs, he sees his mother with a wrapped package inside. This is your lunch for later. Do not eat it because you have already eaten. Thel grabs the packed lunch and stuffs it inside of a case he is carrying. Remember Thel, first impressions are everything. This is your first day as a pilot, so do not be frightened. Mother, I'll be fine. Will you? He turns around to see his father, Vail de Mooney, waiting at the front door. Vail's uniform is more imperial than his son's, an armored vest and a suit. Mia can't help but smile at her men. Oh, look at you two. I never thought I'd see you both in the army like this. Why haven't you joined, mother? I did, but I retired for the two of you. I thought the reason why you left was because there wasn't much action on the brood anymore. Mia pounced at her husband, and Thel chuckles to himself. All right, that's enough. Now, off to the ceremony. All right, all right. Let us go, Thel. Vale opens the door and exits the house. The two turns right towards the garage. The garage door opens, revealing a Relu hovering car sitting inside of it. They approach the sides and enters it. Are you nervous? Nervous? About what? They close the vehicle's doors as they sit down in the seats. Being able to pilot the family mech with two other pilots? Oh, well, yes, I guess I am nervous. <laughs> I never thought I'd be selected to be the pilot. It's a family tradition. Your grandmother was one, even I was. What made you not be a pilot anymore? It's very simple. Age. The Relu's turbine engines turns on automatically. It ascends to two feet and takes off away from the house into the sky above. The Relu enters a pathway within a line of hovering cars going in separate directions like a highway. What about grandmother? Same reason. Is it really? You don't believe me? I mean, there has to be another reason why. She couldn't have just said I'm retiring without some sort of context. It's complicated. Stel notices the hesitation in his father's voice. Hmm. Come to think of it, I haven't seen grandmother since I was a child. What did happen to her? She's no longer with us. Oh. Uh, anyway, remember what your mother told you. First impressions are everything. So please don't embarrass me or the family name. The Demoonies walks inside of the S2 military base through the front entrance. As they do, Thel becomes shocked. In front of them are no one. No one is spotted in the vast hallways of the base. Where is everyone? Hmm, they're probably waiting for us several floors down. Come. Vale walks ahead down the neon-covered hall with his son following suit. The young Naboyan soldier curiously looks inside of a classroom. There's nobody inside, and all of the chairs are away from the desks. They turn at a corner and stop at an elevator. They enter it and face back at the hallway. Thel looks at his father. So, how many things do you think are waiting for us? Hmm, I'd say around 200,000. Really? That many? Do not worry. We won't be in the back. 
Why is that? The elevator doors close and the elevator itself descends. The light passes through as it continues to go down. Bale turns around and faces the doors. The elevator slows down, then comes to a stop. Because we will be the ones who are the main attraction. The doors opens. A cheering crowd erupts. Thal turns around and sees multiple Laborian troops, veterans and recruits, clapping and cheering him and his father. He becomes confused as he steps out of the elevator. He awkwardly smiles and waves, following closely by his father. I didn't know it at the time, but the Lamuni dynasty was quite famous, for some reason that I wasn't informed on yet. <laughs> I guess we and the humans have something in common. Egos clowning our own judgment. But I wasn't at that level. Anyway, my co-pilots that were selected were... interesting. Thel and Bell stands on a stage as the announcer, Chairman Duel Aki, addresses the audience of over 200,000 soldiers. And now, I would like to announce the Cope Islands for the third generation of the Demuni Dynasty. The crowd erupts positively to the chairman. Our first co-pilot will be the Master of Defense, Hezgizuni. The crowd claps their hands. Within it, however, the young Hezgizuni excitedly jumps up and down. His mother, Timo, grabs him by the ear and calms him down. Thel face palms at this embarrassment. Now then, for the second and last co-pilot. This is a request from Vale Demuni himself, and it shall be granted. It shall be the sharpshooter of Elda, Vinch Ami. Then removes his hand from his face and becomes shocked at this announcement. He looks at his father. Vin? Of the Chamney dynasty? You'd be surprised that our families have history. What kind of history? Just ask her yourself. Wait a moment. Has anyone seen Vin Chami? Everyone looks around. No one has spotted her. Hmm. <laughs> Typical Chamney. Late as usual. Don't worry, Thel. You'll get to meet her. I was very aware of the Guzuni dynasty. Apparently, the family is very famous for their defensive strategies and mech battles and protecting the cities against massive monsters. I never knew I'd be a future ally with Hess, let alone an amazing friend. But how we started off as such was... awkward, to say the least. At noon, every student and cadet are at ground level. A grand ceremony feast is underway in honor of the new pilots of the Muni's mech. As for the pilots themselves, one of them is busy being too excited for his own good. Hez approaches Thel as he's getting his food. Hey, you're Thel, right? Of the Demuni dynasty? Thel, holding a plate of food and a coffee with Briro, looks at Hess awkwardly. Um, yes? Nah, don't worry about me. I'm not that insane. Hard to tell considering you are jumping up and down like a fool. Oh, <laughs> my apologies. Uh... <laughs> uh, sometimes I don't know what I'm thinking at certain points. That's given me much confidence. He walks away from Hess to a table where his father is. As he sits down, he immediately realizes that he followed him to the same table and sticks next to him. Oh, for the love of Goro. So, I hear that your family is famous for the brawling style. Is that true? More or less. You'll have to excuse my son. Sal looks ahead and sees Timo sitting down next to Vale. He tends to get carried away with things like this. Hess! Behave! Yes, mother. Well, at least there's one voice he won't back down to. Timo turns her attention to Vale. Hello, Vale. It's been 15 years since our last meeting. Hard to believe it's been that long. The father, how do you know the Gazunis? It's not so much how. Every Naborian knows of the Gazuni dynasty at this point. And like the chairman said, we are best known for our aggressive defensive strategies. Aggressive? Huh, that wasn't mentioned. A thought comes into Thel's mind. Wait. Is it true that the Gazuni dynasty is in third place? Well, I wouldn't say that we are third, but yes, we are. Hez turns his head embarrassed. This is surprising to Thel. In his life, he barely heard anything about his own family's place in history, but hearing that the Gazuni dynasty is in third place, he feels a little bit sympathetic. Vale brushes his mouth with a cloth and looks at Thel and Hess. I believe it is time that you two meet Vuki. Vuki? Hess's eyes lights up with sparkles. In hangar number 42, the 80 meter tall mech, Vuki, stands at the very end. Its model is a lot like an Aborian male, and it is red and black in color. The mechanics and engineers are at work adjusting and tweaking many of the external and internal elements of the machine. A blonde, ponytail Naborian female walks inside of the hangar. She looks at the massive mech from ground level. The majestic size of it does not faze her in the slightest. She looks down and snaps her fingers. A holographic screen appears in front of her. She gets a good look at the mech specifics. 
Type of class, Vuki class battle mech, one of three. Number of years in service, 200 years. Amounts of upgrades, 20. History in great detail, though there are some parts of it that are covered in red. Specifications, brawler, shield defense, and up-to-date weapon system. And then there are the new pilots, Theldamuni, Hezkazuni, and Vinchani. She turns to the battle log and just like its history, some of its parts are covered in red to prevent anyone from knowing. This confuses the female Naborian. Why is it being censored? Is it because of Zero? There he is, Vuki. A beauty, isn't he? She hears the voice of Hess and immediately closes the screen. She turns around and spots him and Thel walking into the hangar looking at the mech. Then their eyes turn to the blonde female. Hello there. I believe that this mech already has its three pilots. You're the one to speak given that this is not the mech for you. <laughs> On the contrary, this mech was my grandmother's. Then my father's. And now, it is mine. Yours? A sudden realization comes into her mind. Wait. Are you still the Mooney? I am. Oh. Oh, which means that he's has Gizuni. <laughs> right you are. <sighs> of course, I have to be a pilot with him. Hey, who are you to say that? Vin Chamney. That's who. And what's wrong with the way I said? Your family are the ones who are always in third. We may be third, but we are among the top no families on the brew. Hm. Am I supposed to be jealous? Hez, that's enough. <clears throat> now then, Vin, I'm guessing that you are aware that you're my co-pilot. I found out the moment the chairman told me about it. I didn't appear at the ceremony because I only speak to my pilots. But yet, to my dismay, she walks up close to Thel. With each step she takes towards him, Hez walks back each step. She stops two feet away from him. I never thought it would be a descendant of our family's rival. What? Uh, y you don't know about that? Thel shakes his head. <laughs> Typical. All right then, I'll give you the basics. For generations, our families relish in competition to see which will be more skilled and gifted as a mech pilot. Naturally, the Chamdi dynasty were ahead of everyone else. She smirks as she says that. Our mech, Lumki was the finest mech of our current era, able to win mech battles and save cities countless times from months. Her smirk disappears. But then, Vio Dumuni arrived and delivered the greatest upset in history. What did she do? Using that mech, she defeated Vumki and apparently saved my grandfather. And now there's some sort of truce between the two dynasties. Ugh, revolting. Why do you find that disgusting? I think it's great that our families are working together. For your information, I thrive in competition. I was waiting and training so hard to restore our family name, but now that opportunity was taken away from me because I have to be a co-pilot with you and I have to work with a delinquent. Hey, we are not that horrible in battles! Yeah, that may be so, but that doesn't give you the reason to act like an arrogant fool. Sales response shuts her up. Tch, you may have a point. So let me lay down some ground rules. Whatever you were taught by your parents, forget it. You'll be under the teachings of a Chamney. Understood? Hmm. If memory serves me right, the main pilot will only take suggestions from his or her co-pilots. In other words, you are the one who has to obey me. Thel's comeback leaves Vin speechless. She scoffs at him and walks past him. He and Hess watches her as she exits the hangar. Tomorrow, we do battle against the Vatsky Dynasty's Mac Milga. Don't waste my time by being late. Good heavenly stars. Seems like we have a hothead as our co-pilot. Hmm. Although, I heard her mentioning something called Zero. <laughs> I don't know why. She has to know that it doesn't exist, right? Thel looks at him with a lifted eyebrow. It was the first time that I've heard a name that I've never heard of until that point. Zero. I didn't expect it to come from Binchami of all beings. After that, the question lingered on throughout the rest of the day. And I needed an answer for it.